Hi and welcome to your UOW update for week 5 spring session. I'm Sam. The accolades keep flowing for UOW, with the scientists from the Innovation Campus awarded a prestigious fellowship. Professor Gordon Wallace and his team have secured the $2.6 million Australian Laureate Fellowship for their medical bionics research. We've been working in this area for a number of years, establishing a very sound scientific platform in order to develop conduits for nerve and muscle repair, for example. Uh, and now we'll be able to address the practical issues of building conduits uh, to bring this closer to reality. It's a big deal for Wollongong, with only 17 fellowships in Australia awarded this year. For Wollongong this is incredibly exciting. We, we have the, the people, uh, we have the equipment, we have the infrastructure uh, all in place. In fact, really we've, we've no excuses. Uh, we can deliver the goods in this area and we certainly intend to. The New South Wales State Cabinet visited the Illawarra last week, a community forum held to discuss the area's issues. A large crowd at the Kayama Pavilion keeping Premier Barry O'Farrell and his ministers on their toes. Bower or would only become an ATM style policing situation. Um, as a chamber we're not happy about that. The Premier highlighting the importance of the forums in resolving community issues. It is important uh, to participate in the democratic process. It is important to turn up and speak out. And at the moment, we are facing undoubtedly very tough economic times. Issues included the rising cost of living, Princess Highway upgrades, and the upcoming council elections. Can we ensure that the councillors that are on these councils, these local councils, are actually locals themselves? As home to the Dragons and the Hawks, there's no doubt Wollongong loves its red and white. And UOW was no exception last Monday with All Canada Day. Special guest, the Canadian High Commissioner, Michael Small, impressed by our love of the Great White North. So you've got a, a course here that's taught by the, 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 the chair of the Canadian Studies program on Canadian literature. She has 120 students enrolled in her course on Canadian literature. That's remarkable. Uh, there aren't many universities in the world where you have 120 students wanting to study the literature of our country. As well as touring the campus, the High Commissioner was here to promote exchange programs and working holidays between the two countries. It's a big, diverse country, very diverse population. It's got very large cities and then lots of empty open spaces. So in one way, you'll feel at home. Knowing what their teenager is thinking is a difficult task for many parents. Knowing what to do in a conflict is even harder. A workshop run by Catholic Care Wollongong has offered guidance to parents in navigating those tough teen years. It's important to connect with teenagers and to listen to teenagers, otherwise you've got no foundation for building discipline or um, building relationships with them. And when there's a good relationship with parents and teens, the teen will have the parent to go to. They won't be trying to find information from friends or from internet or from outside. And at the end of the day, communication is the key. You have to have that open communication. We don't always agree, we can disagree. Could you please put that into words for me? Don't roll my eyes again. <laughs> a stage is probably not the place you would expect to find a group of post-grad medical students, but that's exactly where you would have found them last weekend. Gemma Kelly was there. Just disease department. This certainly was no operating theatre but that did not stop UOW's medical students from taking to the stage for this year's annual med review. A med school isn't really a med school if you can't laugh at it. So this is, this is our opportunity to sort of do something not quite so medical and have a laugh at the students, the clinicians, everything like that. Audiences were pleasantly surprised by the hidden talents of these would-be doctors. Because we're postgraduate, we've got a very diverse kind of group of students. So we've got musicians, town planners, architects, as well as your typical medical science people. So we've actually got quite a lot of, uh, well, hopefully, hidden talent. Ah, oh, I think everybody's a bit of a drama queen at heart. <laughs> I certainly am. So how do these busy students find the time to stage such a gleeful extravaganza? Mmm. Yeah. Well, that's why this is our third rehearsal on the day. <laughs> yeah. Gemma Kelly, UOW TV. It may sound like a reality show, but UOW TV had the only cameras there as the search for UOW's fittest student kicked off at URAC last week. 
The competition, which runs for six weeks, pits willing competitors against each other in a series of physical challenges. And then it's survival of the fittest. Well, it's about encouraging students to explore their fitness, explore their fitness levels and just get involved in something fun. Fitness competitions, it's sort of, there's no physical contact, it's just, just going as hard as you can. The winners will take home a URAC membership, a shopping voucher, and of course a full year to call themselves UAW's fittest student. The final is going to be held on the Duck Pond lawn, a really big event on the 21st of September. We're going to get some celebrity judges coming along too, and um, yeah, make it a real, a real event on campus. And that's our update for this week. We'll leave you now with more images from the Med Review. I'm Sam Willis, and from all of us here at UOW TV, have a great week.